Pirelli has just launched not one, but two new pairs of road tuber tires, and a pair has literally arrived in the post this morning for me to give you a first look at. And also, I've given two lucky viewers the chance to win a pair of these brand new tires to so make sure you keep watching to the end of the video for details of how you can get your hands on a pair of brand new Pirelli road tuber tires. Right, let's have a closer look and unbox them first. My favorite subject of tires, so I'm really excited to see these. Inside a quite massive box is a pair of new tires. Oh, the smell of rubber. Not a bad way to start the day. Okay, let's have a closer look. So brand new pair of road tuber tires. Now Pirelli is relatively new to the bike market but has made some great road tires so far. But this is their first road race tuber tire and it's available in two versions. Now the P0 Race SL here is the lightest of the two tires with a claimed 245 grams for a 24 millimeter tire. So very lightweight. These are 26 and weigh a claimed 270 grams. I put on my scales and they actually weigh so as well as a 24 and 26, they're also available in a 28 millimeter as well. And then there's a P0 Race TLR, which is an all-rounder, almost four season tire with a bigger focus on puncture protection. It comes in 24, 26, 28, and 30 millimeter sizes. And these are what I'm giving away later, so make sure you keep watching. So this tire is a better all-rounder with more puncture protection, and it only weighs about 20 grams more, which is not bad really. It has an additional puncture brake layer under the tread, along with the same B2B protection that these tyres have here. Both tyres are essentially the same, the same tread compound. The TLR just that extra puncture resistance I mentioned earlier and weighs only 20 grams more. So the SL if you want super lightweight or the TLR if you want a bit more punch resistance and all round capability. The new tyres use the same brand new rubber compound, but a clearly visible difference is the tread pattern with the SL having this groove down the center which is there to reduce rolling resistance only by a small margin but the company trying to squeeze as much performance out of the tires as possible. Now there's a lot of new tech in these tires and to help me better understand the tires and to help you understand these new tires I spoke with Pirelli's Samuel Bresson about the main challenges in developing a tubeless tire. I mean, tubeless as, as a technology is a better performing one. So the goal uh, from everybody is to provide a product which is working. It's doing, it's doing what they have to do better. So better rolling, better puncture, better comfort, better handling, better uh, everything. And the tubeless technology by itself is providing that, uh, even in comparison to tubeless, so, which opens up a big topic with the professional teams. The, the, the way you balance uh, rolling resistance, uh, grip and, and, uh, and puncture protection, it's always those three things that you need to balance uh, in a tire. But you have to do it uh, with a structure which retains the air pressure in a different way and which needs to stay on the rim even if you get a flat. Or, so if you, if you have a, a sudden loss of pressure and needs to be safe, which is the the only last concern that the professional riders have uh, about the tubeless in respect to the tubeless is what happens if you get a flat. I mean, uh, you're getting less because of the sealant and everything, but if you get uh, uh, with the tubular, you can carry on riding. Uh, you need to grant, uh, to guarantee the same with the tubeless. So a lot of the development has been uh, uh, put uh, into making sure that the it is tight and safe enough without uh, adding, uh, having to add too much weight to achieve that. Otherwise you compromise uh, the weight and the, the way the, the tire handle and, uh, and feel. The company has developed a brand new rubber compound for these new tires called Smart Evo, which is quite a big step forward from their previous tires launched in 2017 and benefits from the motor racing division of Pirelli the company you most likely know supplies tires to F1. So I'll let Samuel explain how he developed a rubber compound aimed at providing low rolling resistance and maximum grip. This last formulation is the result of four years of improving the know-how. 
and the improvement of the know-how has been coming from uh, all the different uh, uh, um, business units we have. So racing is what uh, uh, is improving uh, the know-how. So we are using uh, uh, functionalized polymers that the general uh, the general category of polymers. Uh, which all the it's the state of the art of the uh, advanced uh, high performance compounds uh, in all the fields. It's basically taking uh, a polymer chain and inserting other pieces of other polymers within the chain so you can have uh, properties that uh, naturally are not of that polymer. Uh, I, uh, that's in simple word uh, the area of improvement of that uh, smart uh, EVO compound. And uh, we went through gas with that one. I mean, all the know-how we can use, we use them. Pirelli, like quite a few other companies, has designed these tires to their latest as yet unpublished ETRTO standards for modern wide rims. And it's also, interestingly, using the RAM and WAM measurement standard proposed by 3T's Gerard Ruman. Now, you might remember I talked about that in my 3T Explorer Race Max first look. So make sure you take a look at that link in the card above. Now, a quick recap on WAM and RAM. WAM is width as measured, and RAM is radius as measured. That means that these 26 tyres on a 19 millimetre internal rim width, like those on the Giant TCR I'm currently testing, have a 26 WAM and a 680 millimetre RAM. So the idea is to give you a better idea of how big the tyres will actually be on your rims and make sure a sufficient clearance in your frame. Along with that, Pirelli is also providing recommended pressures for each tire and rim width combination, and also rider weight. The idea is to take the guesswork as to getting the best performance out of your new tire. So a really good move. That education process is really important in terms of getting the best out of your new tires and make sure you get the best performance, the right pressures for your rim width and on your bike. It won't have escaped you'll notice that rims are getting wider and hookless is a new emerging technology, which you'll know about, of course, if you saw my video review on the brand new Zip 303 S wheels, linked above if you missed that. So I asked Sam about his view on increasing rim width and the pros and cons of hookless, which these new tires are compatible with, by the way. On hookless, there is the position of the ETRTO, which set the five bar as maximum. Okay. Uh, which uh, is, uh, I mean, it was, I mean, it's becoming less and less of a problem, I would say, because of the width increase. Because so five bar on a 24, 25 millimeter on a 17C rim, it's way too low. So nobody's going to pump them up uh, such low pressure. I mean, you will have the tire squeezing and you will feel that. You will get the pinch flat. But uh, with a 23 rim width, or even 25, which is a mountain bike rim. It's a mountain bike rim of uh, a couple of years ago, not, or even right now with 25. Uh, and tires, which are designed for that, so 30 millimeter is the width that we are also adding to, we are providing with our tubeless. That pressure, it's becoming uh, a, a reasonable one, more than reasonable. If you look at our chart of recommended pressure, uh, with the 30C and 28, uh, you already see that uh, a lot of the weights are, uh, are, for a lot of the riders' weights, the pressure is already lower than five. And there is a technical reason, which uh, I think it's quite, it's not enough uh, mentioned probably in the general communication. That is one thing is the pressure, which is related to volume of air and how, how much the air pushes the casing from inside out. There is another thing, which is the tension of the casings in that direction. So the ten, tens, uh, tensile strength, uh, tension of the textile, which goes uh, um, tan uh, it's tangent to the, to the casing, which is the one that uh, is uh, best described as a spring rate of the tire. Zip is starting to mention that. And what happens by physics is that at the same pressure of the air, with a bigger tire, you get a higher tension in the casing. That's why the big, uh, uh, the big truck tires, if you, the massive truck tires, they are inflated of three to five bars, even though they have uh, tons of weight on top of them. It's not that they are, you need to pump them up at 20 bars because there is a truck 
on top of that. This is due to the tension. And by getting so wide, uh, the tension is getting higher by the pressure. So you have to reduce the pressure to keep the same uh, spring rate, to use that word. So those two things uh, are, uh, are matching. In the view of this, five bar hookless, uh, it's going to become less and less relevant. Uh, because, uh, I mean, you will not want to ride higher than five bar on a 28. It will feel uh, like stone. So he's saying that the same pressures with a wire tire results in a higher tension in the casing and the bigger the tire, the higher the tension on the casing. Hence why you need to decrease the pressure as you go wider to keep the same spring rate. Hopefully that makes some sense. In light of all this, he reckons that in a few years time, hookless and five bar max pressure, which is a big issue for many people right now, just won't be the big issue it is at all. He reckons we're in a transition period so just the same as when any new technology is introduced into the road cycling market, just like disc brakes a few years ago. Now, my last question to Sam was whether he thinks the pros will switch from tubular to tubers anytime soon. To be honest and say, yes, it will happen. And uh, it's only a matter of time. It's like with the disc brakes. I mean, I give you two uh, information. Two, one is a number, uh, the only resistance saving that you have with tubeless in general, I stay general. So if you take general values of tubular, so not only ours, and general values of tubeless, not only ours, you have about uh, eight to 10 watts saving in rolling wow. resistance. Wow, that's exactly <laughs> the same reaction that the, the professional riders are, are having. So, uh, and this is true now more than two years ago. So when two years ago, some brand already started to push the tubeless, they were coming to the professional uh, uh, tables table, professional teams table uh, with uh, a tiny advantage in, uh, in rolling, a tiny advantage in puncture. I mean, it was a marginal gain, not really backed up by the wheels. So it was still, still something that uh, was not a clear win-win uh, situation. Now the tire technology has improved, the wheel also are improving. So in terms of weight, for the system, you can almost match uh, the ones of the tubulars. I mean, there is still a penalty of uh, 20, 30, 50 grams more. You get more puncture protection and you get those 10 watts saving, which for them, uh, it means a lot. Even, I would say even for an amateur, I mean, an amateur which makes races and train, it's still a relevant. Uh, the only last point, which is uh, the one uh, that uh, needs to, they, they need to be convinced about uh, is the safety when the flat happens. Still, the only advantage of tubulars is that if you get a flat, uh, you can still ride them, so you can uh, keep going while you wait the, the service car. And if it happens on the downhill, you can still try to save the situation and, and stop. While uh, with a clincher, being with a tube or tubeless, uh, it's if it comes out of the rim, then you cannot control the bike and you cannot pedal anymore. So for them, it can mean risking or losing the losing 20 seconds because they have to stop. That means losing the race. I have to say that even that part now with improvement of sealants, as well as on the bid uh, compatibility uh, with, the, with the rims, I mean, they are tight enough and safe enough that they stay on the rim in the large majority. So. And now as for Pirelli, I mean, we are working heavily with Mitchelton Scott and, uh, and Trek Segafredo to have them raised uh, before the end of the year. Now it's clear a lot of the development has been with and for the pro riders, the company sponsors. So meeting their requirements has been key with their new tuber tire. From speaking to Sam, it seems the main issue preventing pros from fully adopting tuber tires is the tire staying on the rim when it goes flat, a clear advantage of a tuber setup. But that's something the company is working towards solving and they reckon they're pretty close to getting to the point where that limitation is no longer the case. Giveaway time, the time in the video you've all been waiting for. Who wants to win a pair of these brand new tubeless tires? I'm sure you do, don't you? So Pirelli has very, very kindly given me two pairs of the new P0 Race TLR tires to give away to two lucky viewers. And all you have to do if you wanna win a pair of these tires is click subscribe down below and then leave a comment letting me know why you deserve 
want, need a pair of new road tuber tyres for your bike. So I'll pick two winners at random at the end of the week, so you've got plenty of time to get commenting. Um, make comments witty, funny, serious if you want. It'd be fun to read them, so make sure you get commenting down below. Good luck to everybody getting involved. But that's all for now. A quick first look at the new tyres and your chance to win a pair. I'm off to fit them to some wheels and go for a ride, and I'll give you an update in a few weeks' time, show you how easy or not fitting the tyre to wheels are, and my first ride impressions on the brand new an exciting addition to the road to the market. That's all for now. If you've got any questions, put them down below. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And if you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again in the next video. Thanks for watching.